Well, we 40 years back. That's right, Dars. G'day, I'm Farron Raygun. That's right, notorious <laughs> football playing breakdancer. Question mark. No, I am James Clement, soon to be gold medal winning breakdancer if everything is considered from what we saw on the weekend. Oh, that, yeah. Tell you what. Agreed. Just start breakdancing now, Stats Boy. Honestly, you, you I could be do better way better than that girl. Yeah, what was she doing? I don't know. It's pretty good. She's got a PhD. What are you doing? Uh, I got a PhD in stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. Yeah. PhD from the, the the school of hard knocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, I just got it in the alleyway down the corner. I say, don't want to talk about it. Uh, the ISC has said this is the last time we will have break dancing. Thank God. Nice one. This is the AFL Today Show. Of course, I'm your host over there. Are a couple of ding guy, local weirdos, footy nuffs. Alex Donnelly over there, the only team of whom he supports, uh, won this week. <laughs> Yeah, so. and the only team in the AFL that has officially qualified for finals. That is crazy. At the end of round 22, it's wild. The little fella, Stats Boy. Yes, uh, I don't know why you keep introducing me like that, but because you will continue to do so. Our friends in the YouTube comments, and once again, please hit us up in the comments, say you are a little man with a big head. That's true. It's always wearing the hat. <laughs> yeah, it's wearing the hat. It's less head to see. Uh, <laughs> you can't yeah. see the giant. He's got a five head, he does. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That is Liam McCallion, and this is, of course, the AFL Today Show. Subscribe to our <laughs> YouTube channel channel follow afl today across all of the socials all the good stuff because i'll tell you what footy is back we've only got two weeks left yeah i was chaos finals you don't have finals yeah you don't I Either probably, do the blues i reckon i, I don't think my team will <laughs> nah, I, think they, I think they will st still scrape in either way let's do a quick look around 22 22 22 this i nominate for funniest round of the year yeah i'm on board even we though have, i was sad it was funny we have just some of the most hilarious results. And I called it. I called it on Thursday's show. Yeah. I'm going now for the funniest outcome possible. And we got all of them. We got the absolute funniest possible outcome ever on Saturday night. So yep. and even, today. even not Saturday night, I'm still talking about if you just in general. cast your mind back to Friday, yep. if you will. Oh, yeah, I'm, I've been reliving this all weekend. Colin would lose to an egregious non-called 50-minute non ah, penalty. Yes, uh, karma. Oh, is swings, that the North Melbourne game? Yep. Swings and roundabouts, that's boy. Swings and, they win a game on a non-called 50. Yep. And boom, they lose a game, possibly, on a non-called 50. Yeah. They don't play Love the G enough, though, apparently. Yeah. We'll get, the we'll Lions are out there tweeting awesome photos of them. Bit of archery hitting the hitting the target. <laughs> And then go kick 8-16. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've missed the board. What are you doing? Are they they doing? lose at the Gabbertoir <laughs> to the GWS Giants. Chaos. Then we have a North Melbourne Kangaroo oh, team. That's not funny. They yeah, fall yeah. from grace in the last two minutes, up three scores, stats boy. I was, I was, I was partying. I was like, we're, we're running another game. And then, oh, wait, what? We what missed. happens in Tassie? Weird stuff. Oh, Weird stuff. Always. Then we have the Cats. Going out to Freo to take on a red hot Dockers team Just, and smash them. Yep. Well, not smash them, but they beat them <laughs> was pretty handily. They, they did smash them in the first quarter. And then Saturday night, uh, the piece de resistance. Oh. <laughs> oh, just feeling very chicy, so chic, so French. Uh, so Frenchy, so chic. Let's do it. The Essendon bomb race. I can't wait to talk about this game. Yeah. Somehow lose a game after the sun to Mac Andrew kicking a goal. Big Mac game. gave him the shush as well. I loved it. I believe that means Essendon has lost the most games on post siren kicks since the turn of the century. It's also in the That's last great. in the last three years, teams to lose a kick after the siren. Essendon three. Yeah. The rest of the competition zilch. Amazing. <laughs> there is also the simple idea of uh, that goal after the siren. Basically. Cooks, Essendon's yes. final. Technically yes. not, but back. They are still there, but it's going to be very The very way the season's going, we got, we got no idea. Outside <laughs> of that, then we had an absolute slog fest. Melbourne Port, gross. Port fall over themselves. Hawthorne smashed my beloved Blues, who couldn't field a team at the end of the game. Yep. St Kilda ran over the top of Richmond. Blah. But then... Yeah, this is a, well, this is a weird Western one. The Western Bulldogs, hotter than fish grease. <laughs> and then they go to Adelaide. And they get us stuck into a couple of those tasty, tasty imperial sized pints. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I miss those pints. They come fish, in pints. I miss, fish grease <laughs> I miss gets, those pints. It's a bit congealed. <laughs> <laughs> it gets gross. Hey, that's just a disgusting image. Turns into the Adelaide Crows, I don't know, delicacy. Congealed fish grease. Off floater. they go. 111 <laughs> 72, they win that game. Absolute chaos. We're going to wrap up every single one of those. Yes. A uh, little bit of other news before we do this. <clears throat> there is a great moment. We're about to do ladder check. Actually, I'll hit on some other bits before we do this fun ladder bit. <laughs> Brayshaw has been kind of like looked at for a bit of a hit on Tanner Brune. Literally just walking past him. He's just him, like, yeah. 
it was in the context uh, contest, yep. and he basically head butted his midriff, and you're yeah. like, that shouldn't be reportable. And he basically and, even didn't even try. He tried to get out of the way. I don't know. Andrew Gaff retired this week, right? <laughs> I'm still of the opinion that Andy Brayshaw just should have a free pass yeah, he got, he, at the tribunal for having his head smashed for open getting king hit, yeah. by Gaff. Yep. Right? So does Carl Mills get that from when he got king hit that time too? Yeah. Brett Staker as well is like, what about me? <laughs> yeah. He's going to go full, full, full. He's coming out of retirement. Like Barry Hall. Shannon Barry Neal. Hall. Yeah, Shannon, Shannon Neal. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, not Shannon Neal. He Shannon plays Noel. Shannon Noel. Shannon Noel. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Actually, that's a new song, Shannon Neal. Shannon Neal. About Shannon Noel. Let's just oh, do like mix this. them together. He's watching Ollie, uh, Ollie Dempsey kick all the goals. He's watching what Jeremy Cameron. He's like, me? what about me? <laughs> it isn't fair. <laughs> I kicked a goal. Now I've got great hair. <laughs> Can't you see? I'm gonna win, but you just take more than you give. To Tomahawk, who's just giving him a hand. Oh my god! Top. Anyway. I did not think that was gonna happen. That was good. Uh, and Bailey Banfield <laughs> just dropped an elbow into Zach Guthrie's People's elbow. face. Yeah, someone said Zach Guthrie is more handsome than Bailey Banfield, and he took that personally. Oh, that was. That was dirty. I reckon he's going to get a week. Dog yeah. act. Was yeah. dog, dog act. act. Can't be out on people. A Hawks supporter tried to give James Sisley 20 bucks after the game. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. There's incredible footage. He's like running around and giving the high five. Someone's going, 20 bucks! He's like, no. Because <laughs> you won. Oh, Skipper. Skipper, you won. He's going to pay for his parking. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Sisley him. has he's probably Sisley, like the most paid player at the Hawks. Sisley <laughs> did say he'd do a lot of things for 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah well, that's maybe, my yeah. vibe, right? Yeah. So the... I do love the. If we had been able to get a bit of a pan back, it would have been maybe our friends from Marmalade just giving him twenty. <laughs> maybe bucks, that though. guy was from Tassie, and he's like, "Can you just say something nice about Tassie in the media? I'll give you twenty. Well, bucks. that's why he refuses. Like, yeah. I, I hate Tassie so much. <laughs> James Sisley's. I don't want your money. Yeah. There you go. Uh, he doesn't need his money. Other little bits and bobs. There was a great. So why this is also the fun. Well, actually, there's one other little thing before we get to the funniest bit. <laughs> probably like three things. Tom Hawkins, the injury. Yeah, uh, sort of that came sounds out. brutal. Yeah, foot explosion. Yeah. yeah, his foot just exploded apparently. And he could have a toe amputated if it gets worse. Yeah, which is because br- like if he plays that last game, is it going to get worse? When a cow stands on his foot in three years' time. <laughs> The good thing about playing football, I guess, is that you don't need you don't need feet, do you? You don't use your feet that often. Like, how is he going to play that last? Maybe so wait, he's done. He's the just going to sit in the goal square and they're just going to handball it over the top to him. The way Tom Hawkins has played this year, though, I don't think there's too much, uh, I don't know, risk. Yeah. <laughs> just put him in a wheelchair and, and a lot of movement. Yeah. All right, the final little bit of the funniest moments of this year and why this round was the funniest we've seen. <laughs> I don't know. Big Mason Cox, give me the old shush. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Win the game, then give him the shush. You don't do that. You don't do a shush in the second quarter. Yeah. Jordan Just Clark. Yeah. Same vibes. What was he doing there? Did the, yeah. Did the boop. And Sam Draper gave the, the, old, the, the Turkish gun guy. And as the Gold Coast Sun set after the game, just like the Turkish guy, you finish second. Finished second or, yeah, yeah, the meme is out there, and he's like, "Yeah, they both finished they both second. Finished yeah. second. Nailed it. You won silver." Dude, I'm loving every sport at the moment. Every like, there's so many sports people doing the gun celebration. It's so cool. I love, I love the idea, like calling a shot and talking your talk, talking your ish. You don't yeah. do it in the second it. quarter. Though, I yeah. love it. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I also love it when it blows up in your face. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of blowing up in your face, here is an extra part of the funniest round of the year. Why is this the funniest round? Well, if you cast your mind back to round 15, yes, it was a simpler time. Round 15. I hadn't quite hit on my Shannon Noll impersonation for Shannon Neal. I was still in the throes of Whoa, Harley Reid, Bamba Lamb. And the Carlton Blues are riding high. Second place on the ladder after round 15. Yep. Feeling Were good. Second? Feeling great. Yeah, that was Third second. place. I know, I'm joking. We're Essendon. Fourth place with Collingwood. Yep. Prompting Matthew Richardson to go. It's going to be great this year. I can't wait because we're going to have four, all the big Victorian three of the team, biggest Melbourne Victorian teams, teams yeah. in the top four. <laughs> Smash cut to round 22. They're all out of the eight. They're ninth, tenth, and eleven. Ninth, tenth, and eleven, boys. <laughs> what is going on? The AFL is so mad because obviously those clubs are obviously bringing in the big revenue as well. So they'll be filthy with that. Still if, first. Sydney's still first. I'm just saying, if Gil McLaughlin was still alive, he's at the tab, would, not working. That's the joke. He's yeah. at. <laughs> If he hadn't been stabbed in the back and booted out of the car by his buddy Andrew Gill and Dylan, yes. hey, there's no way Gill would have let this happen. <laughs> what, he would have he'd be on, got Carlton Nesson in He'd be all on the del- old Dan Andrews phone going, nah, get him in the top four. <laughs> <laughs> Need to make some of this walking around money well, with gate receipts. Where's the first uh, Victorian team? The first Victorian Geelong. team, seven. It's Geelong. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot yeah. about Geelong. Oh, Melbourne first, team. That's first, Melbourne team. First Melbourne team. I meant to say Melbourne team. Oh, I meant to stats, say Melbourne. Their, finals, their finals are at the MCG. I meant to say Melbourne team, yeah. Stats boy, just... Just the, I don't the, care about Geelong. They call him the Scourge of Geelong for two reasons. <laughs> now he's a new hey, girlfriend. Enough. Anyway, yeah. let's do it. It's time for the round 22, or the post-round 22, ladder jerk. Craziest ladder jerk. ever. Rules. Nuts. 
Sitting on top and the only team to be assured of a finals <laughs> appearance this year. Tim, what did you say, Jim? It's round 22. It's round 22, stats boy. Give Wait. us the stat. That yeah, uh, Sydney are the only team in the eight right now that have but lost the finals. Latest, this is the, the latest, latest time ever. Well, yeah, latest time ever that the that. first team has qualified for finals. Yes, this is remarkable. They that is are wild. Fifteen and six on sixty points. With that come from behind, last gasp win <laughs> over the Collingwood Magpies, which we will talk about in a second. They assured themselves top spot. Uh, results would have fallen their way anyway. They did. Yeah, and everyone's just lost. It actually. <laughs> They still would have stayed top, I think, yeah, with uh, percentage, et cetera. So, yeah. But it was still very, very handy they won because they're just like, we're top two now. It's Shush. basically they win one of their last two this week. Yep. Feeling good. Next, we have Port Adelaide, the GWS Giants, and the Geelong Cats all on 14 and 7, which is pretty crazy. And I'm going to talk about parity later. But that's remarkable. You're running out the top four yeah. with three teams on 14 and 7, 56 points. Crazy. And all with pretty healthy percentages apart from the Geelong Cats, right? So the thing is, those top four, those three, all have percentages that actually duck in and out and under of other teams in the top eight. So this is They're actually great where, it's, percentages, yeah. it's where it gets very, very interesting. But the next two teams have draws, so then it doesn't matter. Tricky. Then you have the Brisbane Lions in fifth. Oh, they dropped down to fifth now. <laughs> this is crazy. This is the best part about this year. You go from second to fifth in the blink and eye, or second to ninth if you're the Blues, so yeah. just say. Uh, Brisbane... We'll talk about. They have a huge game this weekend against mm. Collingwood, which is going to be fantastic. Freo are on 50 points. They're 12, 8, and 1. So both these two teams have draws. The draw is very mm. handy. The Freo right are basically that game and a half out of the top four. And they've got uh, a tough run. Uh, and they do have ahead. a tough couple yeah. of games to finish off. That was a tough one to lose to Geelong. Like that was a huge they had to win. They had to win Ge one of the Geelong or Essendon games. Basically, Just to lock in, to lock, finals, in yeah. lock in finals. And it's. Cooked it. Yeah. Then you have another team that just cooked it. The Western Bulldogs, who <laughs> are 12 and 9. The Hawthorne Hawks, who are 12 and 9. And They're in the eight. eight. What the hell? Yeah, my thanks beloved, to a smashing. Yeah. My beloved Carlton Blues, who slip out of the eight because they got smashed by the Hawks, who are also 12 and 9. Oh, my God. And everything is looking extremely dire for the Blues because they have lost four of the last five, five of the last six. Uh, yeah, not great. And we have no players left. Yeah. yeah. No, all your players just died. Are you today. available? No, I've got eight stitches in oh, my yeah. leg. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I quite so literally can't. Even Jim so. yeah, even Jim's Get out. Bossy out there. Get Bossy out there. Anyway, after that, we have Sorry. the Essendon Bomb Rays on 46 points. They are 11, 9, and 1. They can still make they it. They can still make nah. it, but it would entail the Dogs who play GWS and in the last round, and the Dogs have a tough one next week as well. No, they don't. They've got North. Oh, they've got North next week. Tough that's one. Right. Tough one. Interesting. Nah. Sucked in. Uh, <laughs> so oh, we're never going to. They do have North next week, and Hawthorne have Richmond, so they should be. I two. think Hawthorne have. Do they have Richmond and North, or Richmond and West Coast? They've got Richmond and then North. Okay, it's an amazing way. It's for a very to finish easy end. Yeah. yeah, it does basically mean if one of those teams win, like West Coast and Hawthorne, yeah, yeah, but it Essendon basically means done. if Essendon lose to Sydney on Friday night, they are they are officially officially Hawthorne. cooked, even though it looks like they are anyway. Tough yeah. one. Uh, then you have Collingwood Brisbane, as we alluded to. That is a massive game this week. Collingwood are on forty four points. Done. They They're are cooked, basically yeah. done now. Yeah. Crazy for them to lose that game as they did. Gold Coast, what a win! <laughs> what a last gasp! Well, that's why I'm a Suns yes. member. I love it. Never it doesn't lost. mean anything. Faith. It doesn't mean anything, but yeah. <laughs> Up to twelve. Uh, up to 12th, love that. Over the top of the Melbourne Demons who just capitulated in horrifying fashion against the Port Adelaide Power. Yep. Again, in front of 10 people. Uh, St Kilda in 14th on 36 points after a big win over Richmond. Sure. Uh, Adelaide, <laughs> my beloved Crom. I love Adelaide. Adelaide are the greatest. What are they doing? They just gave Carlton's like entire season like a little bit of a boom. Yeah, yeah. Boom. <laughs> Off they go. Uh, West Coast are in 16th, having won the uh, Harley Reid Bowl. Oh. Uh, North are in 17th on 12. That's three wins, 18 losses, Stats Boy. How do you live with yourself? Oh, well, we have three more wins than half the media said, so. Sure. Yeah. And I'm, still, I'm still sad. I always believe. You're still going to finish on the under five and a half wins. I, know, I'm still I think it's remarkable the West Coast have now won five games and they've won two in a row, which makes them basically one of only four teams in the AFL to have won consecutive <laughs> games at the moment. <laughs> that's the that's West what? Coast Eagles. The Eagles. That is remarkable. It is quite because obviously Brisbane lose. Yeah. The only teams who have won consecutive games at the moment are Port Adelaide, GWS, and Geelong, and the Eagles. <laughs> One of these things Wild is God. not like the other. <laughs> the Eagles. Anyway, and Richmond uh, are on two and 19. Yeah, yeah, they got lost on the way to Marvel. Righto. Yeah. Quickly, Ventsesh. This is very simple. Like usually, I can always just go, you know what I love? Woody. Yep. 
Homer and the Donut Machine, but it's footy. Footy, footy, footy. And it's me. Yep. Hi, footy, footy. People Hi. who say any team, oh, their season's over. Their season's <laughs> over. Or the eight is set. Basically, before any time before round 23, we've seen this Especially last year, this year, year before. Year. Yep. Like, it's so been close. absolutely nonstop. You're frauds. You are on watch. There's so, a lot of people in there. I'm basically I'm saying, I'm saying Alex is a fraud. <laughs> He's on watch. He doesn't know ball. You got to know ball. Oh, sub him out. You know what ball is? Ball at the moment is about parody. Yep. The parody of the modern game is unparalleled, and we're only seeing <laughs> it get tighter and tighter and tighter as the draftees that are coming into systems are pushing out, uh, basically making the bottom six of every team at least half decent. Yeah. Which is I pretty crazy. I think the depth in there if I was awesome at the moment. I think my favorite part is it's getting towards more of the NFL, which is any given Sunday. Like your team can be an overall sort of stinker. Yep. But it can be round 22. You could not have won a game away all season. Exactly. And you can win after the siren against the Bombers. Because, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> but also, you could be a team like Hawthorne who lose their first seven games. Five. Yeah, five. If they I, lost it was, their first I five. Yeah, five. five, yeah. And win a game, then got belted by it. Sydney. They just had a One horrible, first, horrible first seven, seven games. Weeks. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's where all their stats start going good. Yes. So you have this moment where it's Hawthorne. looks like their season is done and cooked. Smash cut to round 22. They're beating the Blues, who were second a scant few weeks ago, all around the park. So just shush. Oh, they're done. It's cooked. Oh, nah, no nah, one out there no knows what cooked. the ladder is going to do. No this one. is the best Because part. everyone today was going, this season, you know, it'd feel normal if Adelaide come out and smoked the dogs. And then they did. And yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> Somehow. That's why it's the funniest round. I love this. The dogs, as I said, had been hotter than fish grease. Then it congealed on the Adelaide Oval. <laughs> The same thing happened against the Power as well, didn't it? Yeah. They don't like Adelaide Amazing. Oval. After. And they lost to I'm gonna uh, actually, Geelong. I'm gonna go on anyway, I think this is the point is the bottom of the comp <laughs> is way better than it used to be. Yep. And there are no real actual easy beats unless you're basically playing Richmond, Richmond not Richmond. at the MCG. Like, any, well, even North. We're not going to beat any of the big teams, but, but we're at least being competitive. Richmond not at the MCG, North away from Marvel. Yep. And this is the best part. I'd rather be banging on about how awesome the AFL is right now than yeah. umpiring or Andrew Dillon's haircut. <sighs> And yeah, why I can't get it. There was a lot of. <laughs> to be honest, I'm happy to talk about that. Any yeah, drop. you really are. <laughs> really banging on about it. I still, I'm still, I'm fixated about my call the other day. How about he's the baldest man with hair you've ever seen? <laughs> so the last game the dogs won at uh, like Adelaide Oval, by the way, was the prelim in 2021 against Port. Nice. Jeez. Good job. There you go. That's yep. round 22. I'll tell you what. <laughs> the fun part is any given Sunday. Yeah. It's a game of inches. Well, we love it. Give a speech. Yep. Go. Right. Let's do some game raps. Hey, cast your minds back to Friday. That was a fun game, wasn't it? Well, lucky you said you won. Otherwise, Alex might not be here. For 15 minutes, it was fun. Yeah, they're very lucky. The holes in Alex's walls at home. And at Can we the get pub, the messages up, actually? Uh, we, are, we actually do have, we have receipts. Yeah. Because he's like, nah, pack her up, boys. It's all say? over. We're done. Season's done. It's cooked. The yeah. fall from grace should be studied in universities by breakdancing yeah, instructors. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's all going on. That was actually before the breakdancing lady, yeah. but still. Yeah. <laughs> it was it ahead still of the game. Yeah. It still worked. I knew it was coming up. Sydney 89, Collingwood 86. Alex, take us through this game. This was ridiculous, this game, but we've got to start with the point that the umpiring in this game was absolutely horrendous across the board. The umpires they were like... They just closed their eyes. We're just going <laughs> to... Anytime the ball goes out of bounds, we're just going to call deliberate. Was there 10 or something deliberate or something? It was something like that. Three of them were disgustingly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the others I could see. Like so, The Mason Cox one I felt was wrong. The Nick Dacos one was wrong. And the Robbie Fox one was wrong as well. Why? What? It's like all of a sudden they had a meeting like how we said at the start of the year they just randomly go let's concentrate on this rule today that's a genuine, why do they do that genuinely felt like that yeah swans actually kicked a goal in the first quarter and we're like hell yeah this is great collingwood kicked five <laughs> uh there was at times and i text this in our group that the swans at times felt like they were just about to rip the game to shreds but they kept making like silly mistakes, yeah, dumb mistakes uh, yeah. turnovers nick blakey honestly can't hit a target for 25 <laughs> what was meters he doing? away yeah. oh. and they were just they were just flat Errol was getting tagged out of the game, like steel side bottom. He did an amazing mm. job, had great amount of the footy as well. Uh, Darcy Cameron just destroyed Brody Grundy in the ruck uh, in the revenge game, kicked a pretty sweet goal from the uh, – yeah, actually, I think he did the shush as well. So oh, Too early thin. on the shushes. Yeah, same in. with Mason Cox, doing the shush and pushing Harry Cunningham, like – He's smaller than stats guy, but yeah, like I honestly, can take Harry and yeah. then and then he does, <laughs> then he has a tap with thirty seconds to go with no ruckman around him, and he hits it straight to Nick Blakely. Good job, Mason Cox. You're really good at football. He's literally done nothing. Uh, Collingwood should have killed this game in the third quarter. Oh, yeah. They missed probably four set shots, and it kept the Swans in the game. Ned Long then kicks the first goal, 
And then Isaac Heaney, as said in this message here, Gerald, they bounced back. He put the team on his back. He's like, me, me, <laughs> best player in the competition. 14 touches, three clearances, a goal, five marks. Chunley Warner also joins in and just like, hey, me too. But was that just in the last quarter, 14? In the last that's quarter, a, in, like, the, in the last quarter, Warner's had 14 touches, crazy. five clearances, and a goal and a couple of marks as well. Luke Parker wow. just finally in the midfield. He's back. A couple of clearances. <laughs> One to Logan McDonald, who we said after a couple of those misses would bomb a long one when it mattered. Bombed a long one when it mattered. <laughs> and then I may have died and gone to heaven when Errol snapped that one around the corner. That was that pure was perfections. That was really bad defense by Collingwood, though. You, like, out of all people to leave on that side, on his left. Go check out very dumb. Jeff White's Twitter. He breaks down yeah. like the changeover because Heaney was going one way. Side bottom went to follow yeah. Heaney and Quainor got stuck looking at the footy and it just fell in Errol's hand. Goal. Oh. Uh, no clutch problem. But Collingwood, the magic finally ran out because they are minus 91 in their last five last quarters. What? Really? Yeah, so minus the last five weeks, they're they're past five, five last fourth quarter. quarters. Yeah. Fourth quarters. They yeah. are minus 91. That is... That's like they've won a couple of those games that we said that Richmond game was not convincing. Yeah. They fell over against Carlton. They'd lost before so that. So the opposite of last year and the year before where every last quarter they just dominated. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. Chad Chunley Warner needed to have that fourth quarter. He had a couple of shockers mm. early yeah. on as well. You're yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Had very much the- Those little uh, dinky chook, kicks. Chook mm. with its head cut off kind of vibe. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of the Sydney. Like, Same with Blakey. Blakey, oh. Blakey was just- he seemed so rattled every time he kicked the ball. It's yeah. just, it was killing me. Honestly, killing me. But yeah, Sydney are lucky that Errol kicked that because otherwise they would have been. Oh, no, I like reckon you would have been, they would probably would have kicked another one anyway in that time mm. as well, the way it was going. And Will Haywood popped up and kicked three goals as well. I thought he was really good. Yep. But Massive Luke, early. Luke yeah. Parker, when he got into the midfield, it just showed why it's like, yeah, he has to be in the team every week from yeah. now on. Yeah. And Matty Roberts, has he left potential rising sun? Uh, run rising star run too late. Yes. His last five weeks, he, he has, averages. He has been great. Last yeah. five weeks, he averaged twenty seven possessions yeah. and a bunch of inside fifties. Like he's flying. If yeah, if he was like that at the start of the year, but he he's been awesome. Yeah, last he was five like weeks. good for the first month, dipped, and then the last five yeah. weeks. Good. So much of this for me is just like looking at the Collingwood team and going, you can see the gaps in the holes. Yeah, mm. like, like there's Nick, one in defense, and it's Nathan Murphy size. Yeah. Yep. There's one sort of that half forward flank mid. To go, to go, to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and Lockie Schultz front. missing easy set shots. Yeah, it's like my check. It's like, yeah. yeah, we don't have my check. So and sure, like, yeah, if they had Freo Schultz. Yeah. And if anyone out. talks up Nick Dacos's game to me, you are wrong. <laughs> yeah, if he somehow gets in the coaches' votes, that's a, that's a three deal. votes in Dacos. He, no. he went at 30% efficiency, 11 direct turnovers to the Swans. Yep. He was dreadful. This is a huge game. Yep. So I've let him just go off the. Oh, that's fair. It was probably the most important game. Talk about eight point game. It was not really an eight point game. It's more like win this. You're all certified. You cook Collingwood, yeah. And you've cooked Collingwood. Yep. Huge game. Massive game. So how are the two fan bases feeling after this? Swans like, fans. <laughs> that, no, Swans fans are like, that last quarter, does that spark us into action against Essendon and Adelaide and we are the flag favourites once again? I can't say you're flag favourites until you play a good first quarter. Who's that's, that's playing my... better football though? That's the question. Like, the best. Take that uh, last quarter out. Who plays? Who's played better football? Because you look at the other teams that were in the sort of what, top, Mix. I, well, I was Geelong, saying Brisbane and then they just yeah, lost. Yeah, Brisbane lose, Geelong yeah. beat Freo. Uh, GDOS, Western Bulldogs get smashed. Western Bulldogs lose as well. It's like, and and you think also, remember, the Swans are going to have two finals at the SCG. What I'm trying to say is Hawthorne are going to win the flag. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. not. Uh, how are the other fan base? How are the Pies fans feeling? They oh. won the flag last year. Oh, oh, if this was at the MCG, it would so, have happened. Yeah, so this is, about this is what they should feel. They won the flag last year. They've gotten the injury bug this year. Yeah. It sucks. They'll be like, ah, oh, we won the flag. We won the flag. But because they're Pies fans, <laughs> they expect the A fifty like, men. How is it not fifty men? What is going on? Because that's basically how legible yeah. most of them usually are. The AFL is rigged. With all due respect, I, heard, I, I gave them as much respect. Oh, as yeah, just I a also. pause. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that was Craig McRae going. Well, oh, if this is the MCG, it would have been. Pies. If Craig McRae didn't say that as well, I feel like the backlash wouldn't have been as much. No. He, he he's not usually like that. He just had a big swoop as, on the weekend. As someone who said to me, is like. I don't rate him too much as a coach. He got a great list that start, nah, just went like that. Good, and now that coach. they're going downhill, what other moves has he got? Uh, and then also Collingwood fans going, oh, of course the AFL rigged it because they need Sydney to go well. Hashtag <laughs> AFL rigged. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Yeah, because the AFL definitely don't want to see Collingwood in the finals. Yeah, in the play, finals. yeah they would rather Collingwood than anyone they in the finals. They would 100% yeah. rig it so yeah. that Sydney lose. Exactly. And that Collingwood make them all the finals. money. Yep. Nice one. Saturday, 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 Saturday. Uh, Brisbane hosted the GWS yep. Giants and lost in dramatic fashion. Oh As I said, God. they call 16-64 to 13-4-82. 
Uh, crazy weird kit matchup. Great but kit. With the overcast it. conditions, it was loved great. It looked awesome. <laughs> it did look it was strange that we have, I think we've got enough GWS kits that they could be in the most amount of great kit matchup games. Mm. And it's like they don't even hit some of their best like the choices. charcoal. The, the charcoal is the best. But it's Brisbane have really good kits. I think it's Brisbane. Amazing. I love it when really they rip spread. out the charcoal against mm. the Swans when they play them at the SCG. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Anyway, yeah, but it was a really weird, oddly fun one because you had the bright orange and you had the maroon yeah. and yellow, and it ruled. Yeah. Anyway, uh, GWS kicked one point in the first quarter. Yeah. Brisbane they kicked four. Is this a Sydney thing? Like, uh, like yeah. you can't play well in the first quarter? Well, GWS just decided to copy their big, bigger and better brothers <laughs> and see if they could do it, and they did. But Brisbane should have been up by eight goals yeah. at quarter time. They just did not kick straight, which has been a bit of their problem all Last year. Last couple of years. They've Chucky that, yeah. Cameron, Joe Danaher, and I think they, they, the one game they kicked straight was the grand final, funnily enough, but it's they just stuffed it up. Joe Danaher gets on the board early and then sprays one 15 deep in, into the uh Grandstand. He does there. one of them every game. It was ridiculous. And GWS just could not get the footy at no. all. And Will Ashcroft was just like, hey, remember how good I am? Watch this. What do you have? 29, yeah, 29 disposals, five clearances. Yeah, he six great. goals in the fourth quarter to one. Hmm. And like the weirdest one I think was watching it, it was Chucky Cameron missing one in the third quarter. They're like Brisbane yeah. were up. Mm. And he just missed it. You're like, what? yeah. And they only kicked, yeah. Well, they, they kicked meters out. They kicked four goals after quarter time. But GWS had it weird. They couldn't the the end to the right of screen. Um, they only kicked two goals out all day. And really? when, yeah, and when they went the other way, they've kicked uh, eleven goals. There was no wind or anything. I no, it was that. just they were just like this. This is weird, and that's where a lot of the goals went. But after quarter time, apparently uh, Kingsley just it it was a spray, but it was pretty much do better. Or a bash. <laughs> yeah, he's got like, his big muscles. That's literally all he said. Uh, and the, just the I don't know about literally. <laughs> no, nah, he might have just put Toby Green in the headline. Yeah. <laughs> but then well, Toby Green didn't get a touch, but then Tom Green started getting the footy. Finn Callahan started really getting good. around it. James Peatling was awesome. He has been like the underrated star that he no one is so talking good. about. He yeah. was everywhere. And then you had the little, you know, the little whippets like uh, Daniels, Thomas, yeah. uh, who's the kid in the headgear. Um, or is that Thomas so, as well? Daniels? Darcy yeah. Jones. Darcy, Darcy, Jones. Darcy, Darcy Jones. He's really They're, good. They just got the footy and started running. A couple of goals as well from Darcy and Jones. And they started finding Jesse Hogan, who was just absolutely toweling up Harrison. He kicked three in the end? Yeah. Cadman yeah. as well with clutch. Cadman, mm. this was that game, you know, when it's that number one draft pick. We've talked about it for Jamara for the last 18 months. This was the Cadman going, hey, me. Three snags, me. yeah. A couple of snags. Probably should have had one in the first quarter that had a weird, funky uh, score review. <laughs> but then, like, Joe Danaher didn't get near near the ball in the last three quarters. Lockie Neal was was well held, even though he had 24. Like, Zorko was everywhere first quarter. First quarter after that, he dropped off. It yeah. was a really weird game. Like, watching it, if you left it quarter time, you're like, oh, yeah, Brisbane are going to win this by 15 goals. Mm. Yep. And they cooked it. It's one of those weird ones where you go, oh, this season needed one more spanner just yeah. thrown in. So no one thought expect, Brisbane were going to lose that. this score the had Brisbane winning it by 40 points. Because they kicked, buddy, 8-16. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So they, they, GWS 13-4, that's, what, that's what's won in the game. Great kicking. It's just efficiency going forward. Yep. They never look like they're going to miss. Two fan bases, Lions fans are like, come on, man, this is meant to be the Gavits. Well, they won nine in a row and you're like, we're Actually, back. I did oh. see Brisbane fans going, well, we probably had to lose one eventually. And the Giants song is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I saw three different Lions fans say that on Twitter. I was like, that's if, pretty if funny. If I'm playing against the Giants, though, I love the song. That's the last thing I want to hear. Yeah, but, so I, annoying. but it's like, oh, well, we had... We if ha you we are going to blow a game, you want it to be a game where you had 24 scoring yeah. shots, right? And that's sure. the same thing. Like, they had that amount against the Swans. They win that by two yeah. points. They have that here. They don't kick any goals. And GWS... They'll be, yeah, they'll be frustrated, Brisbane fans, but they'll be like, we'll be all right. It could, depending on how they go next week, does it cook their top four? Maybe. Mm, maybe. Or not, sorry, top four, top two. Uh, GWS fans. fans will be just like, this is awesome. They we could be, are. they could go top. They two. are the sneaky remember, form team of the comp. It's yeah. like, yeah, the, every, Giants, six every, every Giants fan is like, hey, remember when Jim called us the best team in the AFL, <laughs> like round five? Numbers, team number six was that? And then uh, Jim was bang on. Yeah, all season I've been. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've, they've, won, yeah. they've won six straight and they're into third. So, yep. they might have been the only one I've meant it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. No, Sydney's still first too, man. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Well done, Giants. They look awesome. They are terrifying. It would be great to have a Swans GWS grand final, just saying. Said nobody. Uh, right, North. <laughs> I think it'd be good. Even I don't West want that. Coast. 
Oh, Stats boy. Do we have to tell West else? Coast Eagles, 102. Oh. North Melbourne Kangaroos, 97. Whoa, how do you mean? You could have used him. Whoa, oh, he mean? was crap, but. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he though. He's a great hanger. You could have used his 12 possessions because that could have won you he the game. He was so bad. I don't want to hear anything. If Charlie Reid is. He wasn't even in the top 15 players on the ground, but I'm being very salty here. Do we have to change Oscar Allen's name to Oscar Allen 5? Five, five plus. plus. So, yeah. yeah, Oscar Allen was amazing. We'll get on to him kicking the, the match. That was unbelievable. North, early, I was like, oh, we're going we're gonna to win this easy. Every Eagles uh, touch in the first half felt like a turnover. I was like, we're a class above here. Combin and Archer were just really good with intercept marks. North playing through the middle. LDU wasn't doing anything. I'm like, oh, we're not even relying on LDU. This, this is great. Everything was going really well. Up 34 points. I was just sitting, I was sitting back had, having a beer at home. I was like, this is beautiful. And then everything just, yeah, we crapped the bed. We just absolutely crapped the bed. Yo, Cali, Allen, McGovern. I think he's going to get the three votes in this one. He took, I think, about eight intercept marks. Just dominated Nick Larky, which so stuffed up a few of your I watched four minutes of this game, and it was the last four minutes. Oh. And it was... It was, awesome. it was awesome. I did the exact same thing at the pub, <laughs> yeah. and the pub lost its Well, it wasn't awesome for me, years. but it, as an, if you're a yeah, neutral supporter, yeah. it was bloody I've great. gone from Brisbane and GWS. I was like, that was awesome. Oh, my God, this yeah. is better. Oscar Allen forgot what he had to play in the first half. In the second half, he's like, oh, wait, I'm really good. And those guys on the AFL Today podcast believe in me. So we do. He, he, we say two plus. He got five goals. It was amazing. He's over there. He's right he's actually, there he is. Yeah. I, I was about to say, only... man, he, man, he lifted. Are we the... uh, yeah, Oscar Allen, amazing. Five goals. The amazing snap over his head for the win. I thought no way he was going to kick that. Like I said to you before the show, North, we're up by 13 points with two minutes to go. I'm like, at least we got that handy point. Three three scoring shots, easy. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Three goals. Uh, they did it with some time to spare. You guys just no crap down your pants. You yep. did not know what... Like, ah, ah, ah! That was so bad. Sheezel can hold his head high. He was amazing. Even limping around. I'm actually a bit worried about him. I reckon he might be out next week. He had a really bad ankle injury. Oh, no. It's going to ruin your season. No, I know, but... Well, super coaches. Super coach, saying. yeah. And then Cherry oh, was yeah. unbelievable. I think that's the best performance by a Ruckman. This is where year. the question, Cherry or... or the yeah. I'm going to talk about that in uh, Best I'm going round. Cherry or He right was now. unbelievable. 30 touches for a Ruckman doesn't happen very often. No, I had him for 20 plus in, that, in my multi. Was that noise? And then... You know, Nick Larky. Yeah, Larky was just really... McGovern was unbelievable on Larky. Yeah. So Biggest Eagles. lesson to take away from this? Don't weird, leave Oscar Allen Weird things happen in Tassie. Weird <laughs> things happen in Tassie. And we don't know how to win there anymore, so I'm glad there's a Tassie team and we don't have to play them. Also, we call this smashing the over and it's smash the over. Yeah, it, did. It, was a, it was a fun game. Uh, how are the two fan bases feeling after this? Roos <sighs> fans, just like, what are we doing? I thought we were way ahead of West Coast, especially first half, up, up 34 points, and then I don't know. What Every West Coast fan is now getting a sleeve in honour of Scowie. Yeah, is he, the only, is he the only tattooed uh, yep, I co coach? I actually, I, I, so we haven't talked about that. Yeah. I was talking to Adam. I, so I was talking to my mate about this. Of all the coaches well, in dad, the sorry. AFL right now, he, I ha think, has the most amount of tattoos. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, wait a minute. They don't have, none of them have any. What's up with all these weird clean skins? Yeah. <laughs> weird. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. A bunch of them would maybe. have premiership tattoos pin somewhere. Premiership tattoos, yeah. Uh, Vossi might have a sneaky one Craig somewhere. Craig might have a sneaky one. Horse would. I like that. Maybe. This. Maybe I just need to pin Vossi down and give him a uh, <laughs> give him a sleeve. I don't think we're pinning Vossi down. No, no he's Still. a very strong man. Uh, the Eagles fan base, they just be like, sure. This is cool. How have they got five, five wins? wins. That's yeah, crazy. and it's like we still need to just rip shreds that off this list. Yeah, they're young guys. That's the thing. I literally said, yo, Cali and McGovern were the reason yep. they won, not any of their young guys. Yep. So they they're, they're, Actually, they're, other than uh, they put Jimby as like a key back. That's, yeah, but he's he been doing amazing. that. He's been doing that for the last month and he's I know, looked but great. That, he looked really good. Cool. But I'm hoping though. Also, Oscar Allen's still yeah, a weapon. But it's yeah. also, I'm hoping that West Coast don't bone. Oh, our list is fine. No, your list still sucks. Yeah. This is a sugar hit with the new coach. <laughs> you beat North and you beat Gold yeah. Coast at home. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, like a false dawn kind yeah, of thing. False you don't hope, want to, yeah. yeah, you don't want to be looking at this going and like being the incoming coach going, oh, we've got plenty to build. You don't no, you don't. No, no you've got a lot of. Oscar Allen has to kick five for them to win. It's yeah, it's like you've got to you've got to gut that list. Like if you get beaten by hundred in the next two weeks, that kind of shows where you are. Do I don't blues. think they will. I think Blues need to beat them by a hundred. Yeah, I know. <laughs> have a hope. Yeah. Yeah. Freo fell short against Geelong after giving up a few five goals. Opening goals to the Cats, wasn't it? Yeah. Four or five. Five in the first uh, half. 62 73. The Cats came out locked in. It was Jez's 250. Yeah. Yes. Yep. They came out on fire. It looked awesome. Mm. And uh, then Frio did what Frio does. Worked Just back into the game. Use their amazing defense. Ooh, I have a they definitely here, won well. the kit matchup of the weekend, though. That was oh, that this is kit, beautiful. That I Frio kit is just stunning. It is elite that old Frio kit. So because Don used to bag it. two yeah. in the first quarter. Yes, that's off right. to a flyer. Still led at halftime, and then yeah, it was just the Frio, Frio yeah. had them by the end of the third quarter. Mm. And then Geelong just fought back and yeah. it was a three goal to one final quarter and away they so go. So this is the fifth time this season that Fremantle have led at three quarter time and have been run down. Eliza Riley brought that up actually. Yeah. And, Sports, and then also the I didn't, the, they n
they have the finishing problem. It's weird. They're like All their defense goes out the window in the last when they're one of the best yeah. defenses. In well, the- their, their differential has been 19 points, 7 points, 22, 20, 15, and in the Swans game, I think it was about 25. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so the cool thing is like it was the throwback Dockers kit. The original kit. That you also is so had, sick. There wasn't I enough green. There was a throwback where Danger just went and got off the chain. Danger, yeah. yeah. Matt Fife did some good stuff a, in there as well here d- and there. But Danger was, was like, awesome. Just a couple of past Brad, though. We did it away Danger just burst out. Well, I think he had 20 disposal, 11 clearances and a goal. That's like exactly what you need from Danger because their midfield has been I struggling. I tell you what was funny. Times. Like During that game, I was like, oh, Danger's such a downhill scare. He's never done anything in a oh. big game when his team needs. It's like, Who said that? Are you sure you've watched Patrick Dangerfield? He literally <laughs> has had so many games where they've lost and he's just dominated. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about. It's never his fault. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, I think they missed. Geelong kind of was shooting themselves in the foot in the third quarter, mm. but they sort of got over it uh, in the fourth because Danger was that good. Yep. Uh, and yeah, outside of this. Again, no Josh Tracy, no Fremantle. I'm just going to yeah, say. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm, Sean Darcy was also much. laid out. Yeah, that was And Alex good. Pierce wasn't there. So there's. Yeah, there's a spine. Full forward, there's a Ruckman, spine. fullback. Yeah. Tough. Hayden Young, great. The midfield, the midfield Jordan Clark solid. shot his shot and then they lost. Yeah, he did the Turkish shooter yeah. as well. But that, he did it too early. Do it when you think you're going to win. Come on, Matt. Nice one. Good job, Cats. It's a huge win for them. Ma- it's a massive top eight win. Flag fourth. contenders. I know we said, I think we said last week. So the, week the funny before, thing is, I think they are now. They'll probably make the prelim and I just think they'll get beat. I don't think they can win the grand final. But it's Geelong, so you can't write them off. I think their experience and list, they can. Exactly. But I'm not ever going to write. No. Like, I'm not going to be, oh, no, they're going to do this and that's going to happen. They're Geelong. Anything could happen. They, they could, could get rolled seven. in like the first two the weeks and go out in straight sets, or they could win the grand final. You know how you say about, oh, like, best team in 100 They are the best team in the last 24, years. 25 years, 30 years. Them or yeah. Hawthorne? I'd say Dillon, yeah. Interesting. Made, made more finals. Chaos gear, great win for the Cats, tough loss for the Dockers. Fan bases, Freo like, are we going to screw this up? They keep losing these, these games that they're like, oh, yeah, we should pencil that in. And then they could miss finals now, like, potentially. Is, at the moment, because they, they've got to go to Sydney next week. To play GWS, and then they've got Port at home in the last game. I didn't hear Flag Mantle on the weekend either. That's gone. Oh yeah, we should have <laughs> kept saying Flag Mantle. That's, that's what that, stopped it. We didn't say it on Thursday. Maybe that's why they. That's why they uh, and Geelong fans are like, yeah, we're good. Cats fans are just like, this is. Just, we, we always know oh. we're good. Remember when they're like, remember when we had that five weeks where we sucked? Nope. <laughs> right. Oh, the fun of the round. <laughs> Essendon eighty six, Gold Coast eighty seven. Like I yeah. love the first note. <laughs> that was my first note. Was just, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> uh, Essendon. Essendon fans have been commenting actually lately saying, why do you keep laying into Essendon? You keep doing it to yourselves. You keep giving it's, us reasons. It's not our fault that we have to get into Essendon. You give us ammunition. Yeah. What are we going to do? Essendon we're going to be a turkey shooter. <laughs> As someone said to us on Twitter last night when we're like, ha ha, this is hilarious. Someone's like, I'm feeling like no one on the Sports Today Network is an Essendon fan. And we're like, no. no, but we do have an editor that is, but he also saw this coming. Yep. Yeah. He was, he's a happily depressed Essendon. Yeah. He won the Darwin Cup last week. He's fine. Fine. Still, there's not much funnier than Gold Coast not having won a game away. Since season. last year. <laughs> yeah. Since May of last year against West Coast. Boom. Unbelievable. Essendon needing to win this game to make the eight. Or to stay in contention. And Gold Coast going... Oh, this is the game we're going to win. After the siren, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks to Mac Andrew, <laughs> the, the uh, kicking uh, half back fourth goal after Essendon have kicked one goal nine in the last quarter. Amazing, absolutely. No. It, was amazing. A, it was a good game. The, it was no, no, no. It wasn't a good game. Like, it, it was close. Is what I'm saying. It all was the way horrendous. <laughs> it was an absolute mid off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these teams are just bad. And it was like, who's not going to be bad for five minutes and win the game? Yeah, there was. I, just, I mean, there was a few like fun match. I was looking at the highlight. You got Mera and Rao really fun. Rao was incredible. Rao was, was really awesome. good. Yeah. This is like the throwback weird Rao game. Yeah. He doesn't play good anywhere apart it, from like home. Yeah, home. yeah. he yeah. just threw himself into every incredible. contest. So, I, you, even though in, in oh, I can't even talk. He's sometimes playing really bad Rao. He's always throwing his body on the line and just getting in another. Yeah. So I really like that about him. Uh, great showing from Jake Stringer. What? No. Oh. Uh, Did they hand him a contract <laughs> on the weekend? <laughs> That's well, it, maybe. Draper. Draper was really good. But then he missed three shots in the last quarter. What did he end up with? Three, three goals, goals two, two, but yeah. then out in the full. Nate Caddy kicked three and looked. He's He's so be, good. I, I, I like just him. wish he wasn't an Essendon player because he Nate looks Caddy. awesome. Yep. No, look, look, Bombers fans are just going to be looking at this going, are you serious? Like, Really? Don't give these morons, meaning us, yeah, <laughs> some more, more fuel. ammunition. Yeah. Like, if they didn't continue that guy after the time, we wouldn't be talking about this. Like, if they had just won the game, yeah. we'd be like, like, good job, Bombers. You've done great. You can I'm make proud finals, of you. You've done your job. Yep. 
And this is what happens. Yeah. It's amazing. I thought Nick Martin was really good too. Nick Martin was really good. Yeah, Mac Andrew. Parrish started off the game really well and then didn't get near the footy. Mm. Obviously, yeah. Parrish had like one, we had 27 touches in the end. There was the one, I think, that he had late, right, that put Mm. it straight down the throat of somebody for a goal, I want to say. And uh, you're like, hey, Darcy Parrish, doing doing the good stuff. Sometimes he has big turnovers, yeah. Absolutely nothing else the rest Mm. of the way. But anyway. Anything else there from the notes that you I've want got to a throw few in stats in there for uh, Mac Andrew, obviously, four goals. Before last night, he only has four goals in his 39 career he, games. He and they're like, oh, his, you go forward, mate. He, he equaled his career yeah, goals. total. Yeah. yeah. And in one night against the Bombers, the Bombers are like, he's not supposed to be a forward. The, what about the grab, though? It, yeah. was, it was just floating in the air. It was sick. And then one guy that's not getting talked about is Sam Cole. He had three intercept marks in yeah. that last minute to set up goal cross. Like, he was time. great. They're like, Come on, someone mark it in there. And then Mac Andrew obviously Actually, got the goal. Brett Holman was threatening to rip apart the game. I was like, Holman? What? Yeah. Nick, Nick Holman? Nick Holman. Holman. Nick yeah. Holman. I was like, what is yeah. he doing yeah, he, trying he, to rip a game open? This is weird. And then Dimmelt finally got a win at Marvel. That's uh, his first win at Marvel since 2021. He's hey, like, he loves Marvel. And he said after the game that he loves Marvel. And that was actually, <laughs> that was actually very funny because it, he usually says he hates it. So it was beautiful. honestly the funniest of funny results. We could not have got... Any better result than what we had. I was in a for. bar at uh, the G, yeah. and every single was Melbourne just lost, and they were all sad. And every single Melbourne's one crowded around the TV, <laughs> and they're like, "Go Suns!" And then they were singing the goal code. We are the Suns on the goal. All the Melbourne supporters. So we had friends over for dinner last night, and one of them was an Essendon fan, and he was oh. like, "I've tipped Gold Coast." Did they go home? I could see this coming. <laughs> And in the last, when they kept missing, he's like, and I just said, it was like, you know, Gold Coast are going to go down the other end and kick the winner, right? He's like, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. And then they, even with 30 seconds to go, they kick the ball. As soon as it's kicked, like, Mac Andrew, bang. So it's a clutch issue at, uh, at Essendon? No, it's a, it's a club issue because, hold on, <laughs> oh, it, was, club issue. it was something that, like, they said, uh, Chris Scott said after the game, or Brad Scott said after the game, he was like, oh, we're going to make sure that we do, like, we, we have a, Good look at ourselves in the off season and do this and that. It's like you said so that the last ten years. <laughs> what you said for the last well, twenty years, twenty yeah. years, because yeah, yeah. it's hot. Uh, yeah, it we'll have a concerted effort in the off season. Don't worry about that. As said last year, and the year before, yeah, and the year before, <laughs> and the year before. Should I continue? No, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> it's, it's exactly what happens. It's like nothing that, changes. Everything they'll is- have an awesome preseason camp in Arizona. Yep, we need to get uh, Marcus back on here to rip another. They'll get a jersey. great. Great offseason recruit somehow. They go, oh, this is awesome. And it'll be a Dersma or something like mm. that. You're like, okay, sure. Oh, I just realized the Essendon torn jersey is right behind oh, us there. We probably should have put that on. Either way, how are the two <laughs> fan bases feeling after this? Suns fans are like, yes. <laughs> for the him. sort. They're like, we can't make finals, but we can ruin other teams. Yeah. No, <laughs> That's for, exactly for Gold what, Coast fans, it's hilarious. That's the best They're still part. mad Gold Coast probably in the Absolutely end. spoiling another team's chances of making finals is the only upside that you have. If you're not making finals, yeah. For the last four rounds or so, if you're out of contention. Yep. So we can't make finals, but we are going to ruin but then if you look at Gold Coast, if they've beaten uh, St. Kilda and West Coast in those games, they should have won. That would be fine, yeah. They're sitting ninth and a chance to make the eight with games at home against the Demons and Richmond to Boy, come. Love that. Yeah, so they, they would have sh- had a good finish. They yeah, yeah. should have made the eight. Yep. Cooked it. Yep. Uh, Don's fans, speaking of cooked it. <laughs> oh, they'll be turning the hair out. Are they, though? I think the ones what do you so, mean? Oh. all the ones in my immediate orbit, and there are a lot of them, are yeah, just I like, got a lot of them. resigned to fate. They just mm. go... Knew it was happening, saw it coming. Yeah, and that's why I reveled in how much they got ahead of them over their skis. Same as the Blues fans. Like I've been pessimistic all year. Not one point have I ever gone. <laughs> You're just this. naturally pessimistic about exactly. the Blues, though, and but, they're much better than the than hashtag them. flaggers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the point being, uh, they sort of understood that this was probably going to happen anyway. And well, not well, not six weeks ago. But it's think. yeah, it like a mate of mine's like, yep, yeah, no. Nah. The win against Freya, yeah, that's great. We go and beat Gold Coast, set ourselves up for finals. Yeah, we might lose the elimination. That's fine. But, yeah, we'll set ourselves up after that win for Freya. I was like, well, we need chuck- to keep talking. We probably, yeah. um, they chucked this, that was the last thing. They just, a lot of fans chucked their scarves oh, on the yeah. ground, which is pretty, that's pretty brutal. That's, they did that after this and killed They're not cheap, those scarves. <laughs> it's good. Melbourne, 51. Port, 53. Oh, no one gross. watched this. Oh, I was here. On. I was one of the 17,000 or 17 people that felt like at the G. I was in the bar most of the time, so, but I was so bad this game. So a quick point. Without Cozzy Pickett, is this the worst game of the year and we don't care? Cozzy Pickett was really fun. Max Gorn was really fun. Butters was really fun. Other than that, nothing else. To Butters, <laughs> Rosine, Boak had 86 touches in the midfield. And I put that in there. They were, they were really good. They were, they were the difference. Boak had sort of turned back the clock a bit. He Jason had 28 Orn touches. Francis was fantastic. Jason yeah. Orn Francis I was going to put in there as well. Yeah, he was really good. Uh, I don't like talking Todd about Todd Marshall's cooked. Another concussion, third for the year. Just put him on ice. Yep. 
Um, Clary Oliver, he, I think he's got to leave Melbourne. That was bad. Why? He's just, he doesn't look like he's buying in. He doesn't mm-hmm. want to be there. But Alex, he didn't have a preseason. I know yeah. he didn't, but he's also, he just doesn't look like he's interested. <laughs> no, I know. It's been the biggest joke all yeah, year. Yeah, the joke all year. Like, like, oh, he's yeah, 20 weeks Mate, after it's that. It's yeah. 18. Mate, it's now around 22. Like, yeah. You can train and build your fitness. just stuff. stinks at the moment. I feel like he doesn't, I don't know, we don't know, but send he, I don't him think to he Gold trains Coast hard. Send him to Gold Coast in place oh. of uh, Dusty and away we go. Oh, that's same. cool. They don't got too many mids. They don't need. So like, Port Adelaide still lost the contested footy in this game by thirty. They were oof. horrendous. They were really bad for a team where you're going, oh, they could be top two. They, uh, they were very beat lucky the to get over the line here. by a hundred last week, and then they were yeah. disgusting. I wrote down here as well. It was a scrappy game, but I think that's exactly what Melbourne wanted. Like it looked like a wet weather game. Oh, it yeah. was perfect conditions. It was no lovely, wind. and somehow it's like this is yeah. the worst game of football I've watched this year. They'll be, yeah, yeah it, it was. It was really bad, but Melbourne will be yeah filthy with that because they were like. Oh my God, we just only considered 53 points. They don't have, obviously, Stephen Mays out. I thought, Paul, we're going to jump him. They only considered 53 points and lost. And then I was with a few Melbourne supporters. They're like, all we need is another forward. They, we, which we've talked about. Everyone's talked about that for years. They can't. Just put all your money out of forward and they could have beaten Port Adelaide. Give your first points. round pick to West Coast yep. for Jake the Snake. Yeah. Oh, they were, they're not going to get rid of Waterman now. Yeah, but you might take one of them. Maybe. Yeah. Quentin Narkle. Looks like a Ken doll. That was awesome. He came on as the sub and just killed and it. Kicked yeah. the game kicked winner. Kicked the game winner. That was sweet. He set up the, the goal before that as well. Yeah. Uh, Jason Owen Francis basically stopped the sort of last yeah. couple of yep. like the forward entry from Melbourne. He was fantastic. He was he great. Yeah. What's with seven. him getting booed by Melbourne fans? That was weird. Oh, uh, I don't know. Is he just hateable for something because well, he, he North? gives away a lot of fifty? Yeah, but like I, I, get, I get why North fans yeah. boo him. I no, get. I don't think he should be booed by other teams. I agree. Yeah. Unless I'm, he does something during the game. It's not like he's punched the dude and rearranged his no, jaw actually, like he was Andrew Gap. He actually hasn't done like anything that. that bad at all. No. <laughs> so I don't know why people... He just seems like it. a bit of a prick. Yeah. Hmm. That's all right. Every team has it. Uh, was this Port Adelaide stinker before? Like, we talked about it. They have a stinker and they get and ready for the And then they play the like showdown. three good. Yeah. yeah, but that's what I mean. This was their stinker. They got away with the win and they're still contenders. They're so lucky. Like, I, I'm very confused. So I'm now more concerned about my pick for this one because I was like, oh, well, the stinker will happen. The stinker happened and they, they still won the they damn They got thing. lucky to win. And my point was they'd be like, oh, well, then they're going to turn around and take the showdown super seriously and kill Adelaide. Now I'm more worried about like after what we saw from Adelaide today. I reckon Adelaide could win. The port might yeah. have another stinker up mm. their sleeve. How are the t- two fan bases feeling? I mean, no one from the Demons fan base was actually here. So I'm going to touch on that later. 17,000 is an absolute joke. All the fans. snow, so they don't care, yeah. I guess. Port fans are like, well, we won. Just take the dubs. They're also louder than Melbourne. Well, they're second on yeah, the ladder. Take like, the just dubs. put them into the second spot. It they they beat Melbourne by two and they're still saying that's it's crazy. Hey, Sunday, there was a game. Apparently, Carlton <laughs> played it. <clears throat> Apparently. Can yeah. we go through the scores? Or, yes. you, or you want us to go through 5 the 8 38 to 16 16 112. If Hawthorne kicked straight, this could have been and should have been 100 points. 38 points in an AFL football game. They that is three goals in the first quarter, stats boy. Yeah. I know. I was there. Two. I was there. It was the beautiful, the beautiful sunshine. Carlton were worse today than Sydney were last week. Carlton were embarrassing. Uh, Injuries as well, but yeah, we they have to doesn't that. matter. Yeah. They were down like, what, one and a half legs on the field, I think, as well. At the end of the game. Uh, the turning point, and like, I think this was three things. <laughs> get Always and Harry Mackay miss set shots in the first quarter. Yeah, just to get your confidence Carlton up. Carlton yeah. needed to be in front mm. for basically confidence reasons yep. and to give themselves a bit of a crack uh, because I think Hawthorne are also the sort of team where if you can just go – you're not as good as us. Like if you can, if you can punch them down, just go over yeah, there. They, they're a confidence team, yeah. exactly. But yeah. they get up and about. They, you and can't they stop will them. Just yeah. Avalanche you like they're GWS, and it's like they're the real tsunami this year. Actually, no, they're not GWS. Uh, the second sweeping hawks. Obviously, <laughs> I mean, so those misses were costly. It sucked. Yeah. The second is just the defensive pressure of the Blues midfield, which I've been banging on about for quite literally two years. There was no life. work rate from it them. was horrible. Uh, One way running. They looked slow. They had no accountability. This is Sam Walsh just doing nothing outside of, how can I get another cheap handball, boss? And you're like, you aren't doing anything. To he was lazy game. today. Cripps so was incredible. We get that. Matt Kennedy was incredible. Yep. George Hewitt, excellent. But the weird part is you've got all these injuries. You've got all these soft tissue injuries. So Jack Martin goes out with another pink hammy. Makes uh, it seven. Fogarty for the year. went out. Fogarty goes out. You had. Uh, Jordan Boyd couldn't move. Boyd had one leg left. Kerno. Yeah, Kerno rolled his ankle. Play. Yeah, Should have played. Should have hurt himself. Yep. And this is on top, I think, you look at the speed of this Carlton team. They look old. Wait, what speed? <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. They look like this they're, old veteran They're not team. even old, yeah. It's like you are not. You shouldn't have the profile of like a Geelong. Yeah. 
Geelong, somehow Geelong look know how to play like younger that, yeah. and faster yeah. than this Blues team. There does need to be questions asked about your strength and conditioning once again, though, because yeah, and that, but, um, so well, we, that was we my, have talked about this. I was going to talk about this for old mate nomades is Andrew Jack Russell. Like, talk about. He's you gone. Can't, now. You can't fire me. I quit. Yeah. He was a week ahead of the time. Yeah. yeah. So this week he would have just gotten fired. Yeah. He quit well, last week. He's like, I'm retiring. Five like, oh, injuries. I'm okay, yeah. You're a legend. Like this week, we were like, your key card's not working. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't even send you the email. Like, pack her up, boys. So, and the other one, I think, is the uh, coaching is just the simple game plan. You can see this from the very, very start, the way that Hawthorne uh, came in with a plan. Theirs was yep. to run you off your leg. They, Carlton did not have a plan. Carlton's yeah. plan is be, oh, we'll chip, chip, long bomb. And long bomb, like, oh, yeah. You can't long bomb. Yeah. Grab it no. This is also a thing where Carlton have used the space of the MCG really, really well in previous mm. games. This was like the worst obliteration line, yeah. of like not using the space, uh, missing targets, cooking it. The defensive, so the defensive accountability for both the midfield and the defenders. Even the defenders, they were always 10 minutes. The amount off. of uncontested yeah. marks, but then Hawthorne, like props to Hawthorne. They took every contested mark. Yeah, I feel like we haven't talked to Hawks up enough. They were incredible. Jinnaman yeah. was yeah. fantastic. Like he finally got going after a couple of misses. Cal Shadid is Wed- fantastic. Weddle was, was the boundary. incredible. That goal from the boundary they, is sick. He's awesome. The Hawks just every time, they just play fun for you. We say they're just having fun. <laughs> they, I fun don't even you. know if they have a game plan. They're just like, we're just going to go up the middle every time because that's the most fun way to he's get a goal. He's open him, him, yeah. him, him. They're just. Like seeing it live, and I was I was yeah. pretty close. They are the best team to watch in the. It AFL was right Collingwood now. of two years ago when yeah. they were just making those crazy comebacks. Like we're just gonna whatever happens happens. Yeah. It'll get there. Weddle and Dan Dan Brosio, I feel like yeah. we've talked him up. He's one of the best recruits of the whole year. S- that's another Essendon. Uh, Essendon will be kicking them. They it's wouldn't even give Dan Brosio a game. And yeah, like, so oh. it's yeah the under twenty the twenty two under twenty two or whatever it was. Yeah, Dan Brosio is there. Essendon don't have one. It's like ha, ex Essendon guy. Yeah, exactly. So is he the other all Australian winger with Errol? Oh, the two not wingers. Australian, I don't think. But Oof, uh, making a case, uh, maybe he is. Dylan he Moore been. was awesome. He's an All Australian this year, yeah, definitely. But it's like, and then you have like, uh, Chol was really good contested marks. Yeah, and the bit Weddle kicking three goals. Yeah. Gunston was there. Cash Ladier was like, Cash Ladier, yeah, Cash yeah. Ladier was incredible. Yeah, he's like, I'm Ruffy and Buddy all in one. Down there, the, yeah. there was a moment where Carlton just seemed like they were kicking it to James Hisley. Yeah, yeah. I think it might have been like four or five entries. You're just like, oh, we'll just, just bombing it to him. Yeah, maybe so that's it. not how you do it. Yeah. He's, also, he's wearing long sleeves. Come on. Yeah. Uh, but also, just I think you look at other teams and like you look at their sort of younger dudes. Yeah. Carlton don't sort of have. Who those. are your younger dudes? It's like a lot of really Who's bad. Your tw- who are your 21, 22 year olds? Mott Lop's young, literally, but like, he was really bad. It is quite literally like the likes of Elijah and Ollie yeah. Collins. Yeah, Mott 20. Outside of that, it's he's like 20. Oh. It's not much. Mott Lop just gives him a little bit of something, something, but. Elsewise, they look old, they look slow, they suck. That was horrible. You're embarrassing. Yeah. I'll talk about that yeah, a little bit. I'm glad that you're not you're worrying about the uh, blaming the injuries because I had saw some Cullen fans at the MCG. And they no, were, you can't blame the injuries. They, were, got, they look like they were going to lose before the injury. You anyway. were getting whipped when people were going down. Yep. Exactly. We yeah. And like, there was still a moment, even a, like a one point second quarter, you're like, yeah. ah, Carlton do have these moments where they go, all right, we're locked in. And then you lose two people that quickly. Obviously, it doesn't help. And then you yeah. lose another one and yeah. you're like, ah. Oh, yeah, we're not going to win. This, this yep. is over. And that's how it happens. So how are the two fan bases feeling? Well, Carlton fans are probably pretty rational and very chill about it. Uh, <laughs> I saw that there was fights at the train station. And what? Like, like um, between Carlton fans, they were just arguing. Uh, uh, so not. And Hawthorne no, not fans fights. are just giddy. They're like, we had a one and a half year rebuild. Yeah. They're, this is unreal. So everyone goes, all right, Hawks can possibly make finals. They're back in the eight because of that huge percentage boost. That is, and they're not even just Mem- in the eight. They're what, a percent above Carlton. That's got, remember what I said two weeks ago? Uh, no, don't, get blown out. don't get blown don't out. Don't get exactly. blown out. Yep. And teams are getting absolutely pumped. Well, Carlton and hadn't them. gotten blown out. Yeah. No. It was In a long time. They, they always yeah. had close finishes. And then this one was just like, it was always threatening and then boom. Like we knew a, a couple of teams getting blown out was absolutely going to cost them ladder, ladder positions. It's obviously going to happen to Carlton. It's potentially happening to Frio. Yep. Somehow GWS slide as well. They're a bit dicey and so are Hawthorne too. Yep. Not great. No. Hawks fans, I mean, just... They're the happiest team. They're, they're a happy team. Happy team in Hawthorne. Our, our boss <laughs> literally thinks they're going to make the grand final. He is a Hawthorne fan. They are they could could they be the dogs from twenty sixteen? No. This is what I'm saying. There is no t- like I think uh, we're trying to make this point maybe a week or two ago. Yeah. There's no team that you look at this and this is kind of about my parody point later. There's no team that you definitely will say in the top eight would 100% of the time beat the other teams below. No, no. Nobody. Because no. even, yeah, Absolutely Sydney, nobody. six weeks ago, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, they'll smash Any it. Any given Sunday. Now. We have to go uh, to Adelaide. No way. Exactly. Right. Rest of the games. Richmond, 51. St Kilda, 99. This was horrible. No one watched it. This was... <laughs> Honestly, no we one had, like, watched it. It looked beautiful on the lights. That was fine. 
just a bit was again open the roof. It was a it was, it was a the best day we've had in Melbourne all year. Day. Yep. I went for a run this morning. I'm going to go to the footy. Yeah, footy, footy, and then I had stuff to do at home, so I couldn't go. But it was a perfect day to go to the footy. It's like stuff do you have to do? I had to clean the house. Oh, yeah. we had a dinner party last night. Last <laughs> nice one. Uh, anyway, I chucked in some stats. If so we want some, <laughs> you had member member Barry, and yep. uh, you had who else? Oh, Dan Butler was Cooper really good. Charman, was, Charman good. Yeah. was really that good. Was awesome. Yeah, Ryan Marshall gave a double python after he kicked a goal. He, got, he, he also kicked goals. his. Yeah. Uh, that's a career high. Three goals. Oh. Career high oh. equally. Equal, three yeah, goals. I was going to say. You would have three See, Cooper time. Sharman does it every second week. That's what we've mm. learned. So. It's like dudes like Cooper Sharman. I'm looking at his size and his shape. He's been great, yeah. And like, like Carlton don't have another dude like that on their mm -hmm. list at all. Basically. No, you need that third. I'm like, that who third is this sort of third extra dude that we could have? But he could play full forward. Yeah. Anyway, Paddy Dow actually played well in the bits that I was watching. He did. He like, kicked oh, a yeah. game for his career, so you'd hope so. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, the Tigers, they had a couple of like, who was their dude who kicked goals for them? It was like just out of the Ralph absolute. Smith. Really? Kicked, he, he, he doesn't, doesn't kick goals couple. very often. Yeah. It's the hair. Yeah. Not bad. Dan Rioli had career high 36 disposals and 10 marks. So he, he well, always builds toward the end of the year. Is he looking for a contract Jacob, elsewhere? Jacob Bauer kicked two. That's who it was. Yeah. Oh, he kicked the two. That's early. I was about to say, Shy Bolton just quiet quitting, looking to go to Perth, 11 touches playing in the midfield. He is this. His drop up, drop off has no, been his massive. Best, his best, he was all Australian a couple years. His ago. best and his worst. Like when everyone's like, "Oh, he could be a Brownlow." He was. He's never going to be no, a Brownlow no. mess. When he plays his best, he can probably be top ten player in the competition. His worst, he's like he's bottom like the ten. Third, players. He's the third worst team, third worst player on the worst team in the kiln. Yeah, the Saints are also in the very enviable, enviable position of being able to play absolute spoiler when they beat Carlton in round twenty four. I'm getting Surely ahead of it. Surely not. I'm getting ahead of it. That's the, they will want. That's six shows ahead. They of will 100 percent yeah. do that. So, uh, the fans, how are they feeling? Richmond just like can. The fine. season's done. The season's over, Dusty's not even playing. Yeah, we got so. Dusty's farewell. Like in the last. And St Kilda yeah. fans turn up. It's like we can win this game. How good's life? Yep. Yep. Adelaide Bulldogs. We finished this round off with a huge upset. One eleven seventy two. The dogs went nine goals, eighteen. So expect, expected score in this game was a hundred to Adelaide, ninety four point seven for the dogs. Oof. There you go. Uh, the so, Crom looked fantastic. Their ball, their ball movement, Rankin was really oh. good. I just every time I looked up, Tex and Fog, the the chemistry between those two, Tex was just doing darts inside fifty. Fog was just like, oh, we'll see you. Yeah, but uh, Thriller was like, hey, me. Their whole well, Fog kicked five, Fog and kicked, Thriller oh. popped up. Yep. Kick two. Ben Keys just slid in the between with three. It was great. And early yep. on, like that sort of uh it's the sort of thing you have to do, the exact same thing that Carlton needed to do against Hawthorne, right? You need to push like a mercurial team. You need to just get ahead of them and go, ah, I'm in your head now. Yeah. They oh, also, check they, this out. But did. the dogs are good enough to actually usually fight back. Adelaide just kept the foot down. But the thing awesome. was they stifled the dogs' ball movement early and the dogs were going inside 50 yep. and they were just wasteful. I think they had one score from their first nine inside 50s or something. It was just wasteful and Adelaide were just killing them on the rebound and yep. turnover. They look like a top eight team, Adelaide. The, every Shut time up. they play just well, they look up. good. That, it annoys me so much that I was like, they're, they're going to be good. They're 14th, give it up. Their forward line is so good. And then oh, how are they still 14th? It's crazy. Well, Sam Darcy couldn't hit the side of a barn. In the no, side. he had a he lot of He kicked a goal in the end. Oh, he did? He had, he, had nine, he had nine shots or something. No, like five shots for like one goal. Not, like, not one goal, five in the end, which <laughs> is just chaos. So he's had six or seven shots. Like That's a bad day. Um, it was one of those days where Jamar and Cody Waitman just don't get near it. They, they, and they do that sometimes. Um, and they weirdly do it at the Adelaide Oval. Yeah. Daniel Curtin got his first two goals. Well, Daniel Curtin played a full good. game, 11 he touches, very two goals. both goals. He was like, oh, do I play on? I don't know. He was doing the team thing. Um, this was just one of those games where Crows fans are like, oh, man. That's what I was trying to say. Like They're like, oh, my God, we should be good. Also, Jordan Dawson good. was awesome. Yep. Uh, so was my beloved Lucky Scholl. Yes, I love Lucky Scholl. Scholl. Yes, disposals. He's mm. awesome. He's great. He's uh, been really good this year. Got a lot of time for Lucky Scholl. But Fog, look, when he's up and about and he and Tex sort of just roving that forward line, so, they look so, unbeatable. It's such a fun forward Ed line. Richards has only had 11 touches as well. Like watching it, you Ed sort Richards of also had like a massive gash in his head. Yeah, yeah, he had to go off for a little bit. And Tinglish just continued his really average form. He's been horrendous all season. Yeah, everyone would have locked him in all Australian. Well, he, he had a month where he was, yeah. he was awesome. Yeah. And then he's just had he that. hasn't won a hit out. One on one hit out contest all year. Nice. And it's round 22. Crazy. And like anyway. Bond still tried his best. Like he still had, what, 24, 25 he touches. He really kicked good. a couple of kicked goals. Kicked goals, kept like, goals. A couple of times he was like, come on, boy, oh, I can't do this on my own. And it's like Trelaw's had no impact for once. Mm. Like I know he had nearly 30 touches, but just watching, it's like, uh, he's not doing anything. Yeah. 
Crazy gear. This is just one of those Western Bulldogs games that we've been expecting for six weeks. Going, oh, yeah, they'll lose one. Yeah. They finally they'll, they'll still be all right, I think, because they're going to Fan bases, one. how are they feeling? The Crom are just like, come on, man. Yeah. You've been all year. What are you doing? <laughs> this is exactly next? what they said last year. Exactly the same. And yeah. then the Bulldogs are just like, <sighs> The dogs can still miss the finals if they lose out. So this is my, no, they, they got they, us. Can, they play against North. I oh know. Sorry, if they beat North and then result and then Carlton win their last two, Hawthorne win their last couple, and GWS <laughs> win, it's the, like the result. It's obviously results based, but yeah. they can miss by losing in the last round uh, of GWS. You hate the dogs, so you're just trying. No, to I d- no, but I did. No, a, no. I did a ladder with no hate, and it was just more <laughs> no for once. Yeah, but very you've never done a ladder <laughs> with no hate. <laughs> like, I didn't even pick up that he love. said that. Instant love, no hate. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not possible. <laughs> so no, but I did. I'm like, oh, GWS the way they go. You are <laughs> literally made up of one. Like if we check your ingredients, it's 100 percent hate. Can, can we do an ingredient just, thing? Yeah, we should do that. Hey, like, mustache. To- uh, <laughs> you just take some blood and it's like, sir, we've never seen this yeah, before. It's, it's Jim's blood, is just, just anger. Blood, for it's blood type H. I'm just H. sad for North. We should do, we should do a But a no, so thing. I did do a predictive ladder <laughs> and I had because I had them uh, losing to GWS, I had them finishing ninth. Of course you did. Because I had Freo, no, but I had Freo beating Port in the last game and that's what flipped Okay, actually. okay. So it's, yeah, okay. And that's Dogs why. fans, look, I'm going to talk about the line of demarcation in a second, but uh, it's going to be, this is why I did tip. Adelaide. Yep. I was the only one of us to do so, just saying. You had a decent round. Yeah. Uh, but it was the, the, this was the exact thing. This is the funniest outcome. What are the dogs going to do? Build yep. up your hopes and then dash them quite expertly. To be fair, they, they what do they win? Four in a row. That's very unlike the, the dogs. So at least they've won that four in a row. All right, that. tipping results. I ended up with, oh. out of all of that chaos, I think I had five. Yeah, I got f- uh, you got five. I got four. The stats I got, guy four, got I think. five. Oh, five. Did I? Yeah, as you tipped Hawthorne. Oh, no, you got four. You tipped uh, what's he and Leo got three. Yeah, I got four. Sucked, yeah, I four. think that was one of the yeah, hardest five, tipping four, rounds. Four, four, three. Oh, yeah. Full credit to the boys. The best team of the round that I saw was the Hawthorne Hawks. Why is that, Jim? Well, they killed They you. ran right over the top of this mm-hmm. old looking Carlton Blues team. But I think most impressively was their game plan and going the old slice and dice. And then any time so- they had a hint of space, it was like three hawks Josh, in front of the ball. Josh Weddle after the game, they interviewed him, and he said our game plan was to run them off their legs because they had not been running well all season. And yep. Sam Mitchell said, yep. you're fitter than them, run well, them off their legs. As feet. soon as the injuries happened, they were just like, just keep running. And it, yeah. it was yeah. a great game plan, yeah. And it was uh, so well-rounded, I think, in the way that they went forward. Like, Chol was out there as an awesome target, yeah. mm-hmm. but you had dudes like Weddle kicking goals. You had more out there just causing all sorts of havoc as well. Even the Wizards, like, setting dudes up. And yeah, he just, was really good. And then yeah. Ginevan was sort of getting in amongst it as well. So I enjoyed it. Like, <laughs> it, I mean, it sucked because yeah. Carlton got absolutely They are a fun team. They're yeah. like, Hawks, they're just way better than we are. Yep. Sucked in. So they were the best team I saw. Alex. Swans, getting over the top. Oh, of- I'm not having this. <laughs> Sorry, we got we. You beat you. Cut, wait, where's uh, where's Collingwood on the ladder? Eleventh. Uh, oh, you beat it's the first beat eleventh. They cannot be the best team of the round. They kicked five goals in eleven minutes to win a game of football. Oh. It was the best. Wow, you're almost as good as the West Coast Eagles. If we can extrapolate <laughs> like that, yeah. three and no two. No way Jeez. can they be the best team. Of the anyway, oh, you can you can get talking. to the top of the ladder <laughs> and you can talk. Oh, I'm just talking. To, anyway, I oh, can't have that. Yeah, great job on the Swans beating Collingwood's VFL team at this point. Uh, uh, stats boy, best team you saw. Oh, I did want to say Hawthorne. I was there and saw them. They were amazing. But I'll say Geelong. Geelong just going over to Freo. I thought a lot of people would have locked in Freo to win, especially at home. They were like rocking up in there. Cool kids going, we're going to win. God, you got Jordan Clark rule. just being a bit cocky. And Geelong, their pressure in the last quarter was amazing. This is the first week I've gone, hmm, maybe Geelong actually are a chance for the premiership. And I haven't said that all year, and I think they are now. So I'll say best team of the round. Actually, best team of the round should actually just be that Frio kit. The Frio yeah. kit, not Frio. Like, just Frio I think kit. that was like 100% across the board. Yep. Everyone's best. like. Oh, actually, right. take back this one's GWS. GWS? Yeah, sure. Gabatois. In three quarters, they did yeah. incredible work. Yep. Yeah. Uh, best on ground of the week. Who was the best player we saw? This usually is just Patrick Cripps for me. Uh, he was still, <laughs> not today. He was still very was good, good. But you got but smashed. It's almost the problem. Yeah. Like, Cripps is that good. Mm. And you're like, if you don't have Adam Chera, Blake is, was hit. He had like plenty of touches, I feel like, today. And he, he, was like, goal, yeah. he was playing fine, but mm. it's like where Kennedy is doing heaps of stuff. Yep. Hewitt sort of popping up and like nobody else. Yep. Anyway, uh, Mac Andrew, Why best not? on ground of the week. The dude kicked a cr- equal to his career <laughs> total goals in one That's game, hilarious, that. including the after the siren game winner. That was incredible. Mac Andrew. <laughs> You legend, anytime you can force a bunch of Essendon supporters into a whole bunch of heartbreak and throwing rubbish just to show how big of fake fans they are and throw their fraud scarves over the rail, you're winning my best on ground of the week. He brought Three Australia votes. together. M. Andrew. He just brought Australia together because yeah. everyone other than uh, Essendon fans yeah, are just really like, did. 
Thank God for that. That I was, was so happy you kicked it too. He's like, <laughs> well, they, old mate was on the couch. Yeah, Essendon supporter. Oh, like, oh yeah, I, I need to chill this. But do it, boys. Do it. Let's go. Come Let's go, on. sons. And then he, he's lying around. Oh, oh, this goes through. The camera and she's like eyeballing like me, just going, yeah. say, something. About <laughs> say something. Say something. I'm not going to say a word. And then when he kicked it, what'd you do? I gave a dance. And then he goes, just say a word. The camera angle was terrible. Why didn't they choose yeah, it the, like the point? Why didn't, they, why didn't they choose the camera angle from yeah. behind the guy, which would have had Mac Andrew coming towards? Maybe them, that maybe. was the same camera angle they had for Buddy with the person's head in the way. So oh god. That <laughs> Outside of that, though, he gave them like a lead up marking contest. Yeah. He, he was, was fantastic. Great. It's like perfect with Kingy because they used to just always have to keep Kingy, and they're like Mac Andrew, full, full. perfect. There you go, Alex. Isaac Heaney, he was that last, last quarter player. was utterly insane. Even earlier in the game, he'd still had about 19 touches to three-quarter time. He was phenomenal throughout the game. He had the, two weeks before against the Dogs, it was like he was finding form but couldn't kick it for some reason. It all just clicked, and it's just like, this is why he was the Brownlow favorite. Yeah, he, he was unbelievable. He won you the game. In the end. Oh, yeah. 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 Ridiculous. I love him. God, he's up. When he's up and about, they're like, like he's, he's, he's got his, got his in the AFL. <laughs> Five dudes in the AFL who are like that exciting but it's, and Haney's But it's, the, yeah, it's right like there. a couple of the marks he took. He took one where Pendlebury smashed him. Then he took an awesome like leaping mark over someone in yep. the halfback flank as an outlet kick. It was great. He can do it all. Yeah. That's boy. Uh, I know North lost and I was very sad about that. But one good thing I'm going to be looking out for the All-Australian team is Tristan Cherry. Big X, the helmet man, 30 disposals, 33 hitouts, 12 tackles, and 13 clearances. You'd go, oh, is Tristan Cherry an on bowler that just like like Patrick Cripps? No, he's the Ruckman and he's gotten 30 disposals and 13 clearances. He's yeah. fourth in the league with tackles. That's Tom DeConing numbers. Yeah, Tom DeConing sort of numbers. That man Cheeks is up there. He's third, I think. Tristan, uh, or oh, Tom DeConing's got nothing on Tristan Cherry, but that's uh, that's okay. Uh, Maybe we should see them fight. Yeah. I was even hesitant. Uh, lots of North fans were hesitant when we got rid of Goldie, and Goldie's just been one of the best Ruckman of all time. And then oh, he's uh, doing Clark great Co things with Essendon. Though. Yeah, exactly. That's my, I'm glad we did. And then Cherry's going to be an all-strain ruckman. I think. I think he's going to be a lock. Grundy the last couple of months has been it, horrible. So, uh, not, not, so to his high standards. To his last, high standards. last month he's yeah. dropped. He was. So I he's not all Australian half, anymore. At me. halfway he was all Australian. But Whereas he's not Cherry now. is running right in there. It's going to be out of so Gorn. I think is a lock for me. And then no, Cherry's been so much then, better than then, Gorn. No, I'm saying Gorn. I'm going to say two because you can. They usually put a ruck on the bench. But it's out of Cherry, Gorn, and Roll Marshall. I think ruck. Because Royal Marshall's having an underrated year. But no one talks about the Saints. <laughs> there sure. we go. Uh, definitely not Mark Pitney. No, no. Definitely not. <laughs> Old mate, no mates. Who's got no mates today? Charlie Kerno. There was another moment in that game that I didn't talk about earlier. Yeah. Carlton was still there, thereabouts. Still a chance. Charlie Kerno had a wide open 50. He didn't know what to do. He could handball. He could kick. He could kick the ball himself. Like he could kick it to another <laughs> player. Or he could kick the goal. Kick it to himself. Off he goes. Yeah. Nah, he just doesn't do any and gets run down. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. And it was just like you can't give him old mate no mates because when he gets on the bus, now he's busted his ankle. You're like, well, can't sit there and go, what was that, man? <laughs> uh, but at that point it was. And also just Carlton, old mate no mates. You can't just do that Carlton. in the 160th like heritage round yeah. throwback with this week we learned that Mark McClure is like dealing with like, you know, yeah. horrible like oh, I didn't concussion that. stuff. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Career, yes. et cetera. That's uh, horrible. Yeah. Just brutal. And then so we've built up this week with uh, Adam Sard and Ange Christo at the fish and chip shop and all this <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff. It's been amazing. And then to go out and kick two goals in three quarters of football is just embarrassing. Can't be doing that. Sticks Kernahan didn't die for this. He's not dead, <laughs> He's Jim. Not dead. I know. <laughs> but he should be now after watching that. He'll die of shame. Shame, I tell you. Absolute shame. Carlton. What has gone on here? Anyway, that no, was horrible. Uh, so they're all mate, no mates in my yes. book. Carlton were embarrassing. And like, I think we came, We uh, this was all happening. I'm like, I've resigned myself to the fact that they're not going to make the eight. And uh, then Western Bulldogs in, lose. And I'm yeah. like, don't give me hope. Hope's back. That. It's the, that's what kills you. <laughs> it's the hope that kills you, stats boy. It is. So I didn't want that. Anyway, other old mate, no mates, Ben King. Three old mate, no mates. Wait for it. It hit just <laughs> full on. Just the ball hits him. Fal Did he get a falcon? Face. Oh, I didn't see that. Absolutely falcon. If you can touch the ball, you can mark the ball. It's like you can't literally get eyes <laughs> on the ball more, Ben King. His job is to mark it as Bang! well as a forward. Right in the face. If they'd have lost that game. I don't think they went on to kick a goal from that possession either. No. But they completely cooked it. It's like Ben King, absolutely just, what are you doing, man? <laughs> what are you doing? Kerno's actually had a couple of moments like that this year mm. as well. But Ben King, shocking gear, pretty funny. Alex. Craig McRae. 
Yeah, that's a bring up this. Yeah. Oh, that would have been paid 50 metres if it was at the MCG. <laughs> Don't complain when you've played 18 away games in three seasons. You've played 74 yes. games in that time for a grand total of about 24% of your games. Comparatively, GWS in that time, given they've oh, sold they games to base, Canberra, yeah. no. GWS have played 60.5% of their games away from the Sydney showground since the start of 2022. So don't go complaining to me <laughs> about this and that because also swings and roundabouts. We can think of probably 10 times in the last or two years against North, at the yeah. MCG or at Marvel yep. that it's advantaged Collingwood. Also, Tom McCartan was coming back as the umpire instructed and Dan McStow went, I need to play on because there's 30 seconds to go. Therefore, no mates, stop your complaining. <laughs> yep. I, I was very surprised. I, yeah, we haven't really seen that side of Craig McRae, so that really surprised me. Uh, but that was, fits the mold of being with Collingwood. Like you're a sure. coach. You, as a a player saying that, you're like, oh, my coach just I, had a sook on TV when in, we just choked. In fairness, he complained about the deliberates, which a fair few of them were bad. But then, as he said, he's like, yeah, we gave up five goals in 10 minutes. Maybe don't just, do that. Just say, yeah, just say that and doesn't have to say all the other stuff. I agree. Yep. Stats boy. Uh, we touched on it briefly on Wednesday, but St. Kilda. Retracting quickly on approaching uh, Taron Thomas. Obviously, we were very against that. Uh, all the Saints fans were. Then Saints put out a statement going, Oh, we had a quick think about it, and uh, we all yeah came together and said we shouldn't have. Uh, we're not going to go after Taron Thomas anymore. And uh, they also said their higher officials didn't know about it. That <laughs> is the biggest lie I've ever heard. They only they only retracted their statement and try and go after Taron Thomas because the, their fans are going. We're not going to be a fan of this club anymore if you go after Taron Thomas. I thought that was really bad. And it, all Saints fans, I know that they're not going to go after him now. But you'd just be filthy if you're a Saints fan. Old mate, no mates, just Saints as a club. Just old mate, no mates. Yes. So yes. One of my pet hates is referring to, oh, it's a big thing for the St Kilda Football Club. This is when a football club mm. actually makes a big misstep. Mm. But the supporters of that club were amazing in holding their club to account. Yeah. But I thought it was great because yeah. they were up in arms and just straight away going, what are you what he's doing? Yeah. We don't want that. That's stupid. You're dumb. Stop it. Quit it. I was about oh. to swear, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... It's just like, what are you doing? Like, it was such a just WTF moment from the fans it was, yeah. that put their own club on notice. And well, they said, yeah, that the the officials talked about it and said no. They literally only are not going after Antonis because they're fans. So like apparently, it. Mason Wood also went to the he club. Did, I forgot to say ex that. North Melbourne players he said got, it to the media. Has, yeah, said it to the media, but yeah. also went to someone at the club and was like, "Don't nah, get him, don't, don't get him." Do and Which, also, apparently, a couple of the AFLW players were like, "Guys, yep. what the hell?" Horrible. Anyway, yeah, uh, no good. Why I can't stand. <laughs> After round 22, Pies fan sooking is still just like, I can't stand it. It's like, yo, yo. Like, not everyone's out to get you. No. Like, they are because you're Pies fans. But at the same time. <laughs> the umpires aren't. The umpires are definitely, like, everybody complains about umpires like it's a systematic, oh, they hate our team. It's just silly. It's just, but swings and roundabouts, absolute I talk about the basketball gods a lot on NBA Australia. Footy gods? This is the footy gods. Remember, there going, is footy gods. Remember how we gave you that win against the Ruse? <laughs> how about now? <laughs> oh, they went. The, the, two, the two wins against Adelaide last year. Yep. So swings and roundabouts. Uh, but also, look, to harken back to the the seasons over the eight set, basically, right? The parry of the modern game. Why I can't stand uh, anything outside of how good football – and I've – my biggest thing, I think, is that footy isn't selling itself better. Yeah. The football has been that it's good It's been amazing. Yeah, yeah. That the AFL can't get out of its own road from week to week to week of, like, sh just stupid Taron Thomas stuff, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Umpiring or things Umpiring, like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just let the footy speak for itself. It's been incredible. You should be celebrating all the awesome games that we're getting, how yep. good some of these teams are, how many young stars we have. Yep. But also – the parody is the coolest part because I think the top, the thing that I was mentioning before about how anyone in the top eight, it feels like on the best day they could all beat each other. Yep. My point is like the dogs, even with losing, they are still the line of demarcation <laughs> yeah. for this very simple fact. If you are above the Western Bulldogs, you can win the flag. Yeah. If you are below Ooh. them, you cannot. So Hawthorne can't. Hawthorne no, can't. Probably, probably not. Probably. Carlton probably can't. I can't definitely can't. Everybody <laughs> else, I reckon, has a crack at the flag. Okay. If Sydney have like another weird sort of like opening quarter and then can't run down a score, or you know, a fifty goes against them in that sort of exact sort of spot, you're like, what just happened? Oh my god, Sydney lost in a quarterfying qualifying final or something, and then suddenly they're on, you know, the second week, etc., and they have to play 
a really tough sixth ranked Geelong. It could be gone, or yeah, something. yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Like just weird stuff like that. It's kind of awesome. And I feel like we should be selling that better than yeah. the AFL. I don't know what's going on. Maybe like, just put me in charge. I'm just saying. Look, come on, man. <laughs> I can get a haircut. Yeah. I've got a haircut. It's great. <laughs> and Andrew Dillon's. So I'm just saying. I need a haircut. Footy. It's pretty good. Yep. Alex. Uh, the umpire. I just thought it was horrendous. <laughs> You're like, can we stop talking about the umpire? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I'm not going to add in more to it. I thought it was horrendous over it was, the weekend. So it, was, yeah, it was bad to be fair, but we don't I, talk actually, about it too much. I love, so with that sort of stuff though, what they were doing with the uh, out of bounds. The deliberate, yeah. What the hell was that? It's re- it's remarkable when even the commentators are just like, because the commentators, what are, I'm pretty are we sure the commentators here? are told not to like, exactly. have a go at the umpires because they're like, oh, we don't want to lose our job, which is also paid by oh, the as if they're going to do that. But at the same know. time, like they're usually hesitant to be like, what the hell was that? They never bag him, but they did. And for a bunch of those out of bounds, it's like he's not intending to get the ball out. Nah. Of, he's just gaining ground. Nick Dacos was literally slapping it forward to keep it in, and it rolled out because a football is, it was, a, is a not, weird yeah, shape and it goes that way. Robbie Fox was pushed by Isaac Quayne or it bounced yeah. off his knee, insufficient. Uh, Mason Cox is just a big lumbering moron, <laughs> yeah. so you, he doesn't know the rules of football still. So <laughs> We also had a shocker in the Adelaide game where Fogarty gets tackled, gets dacked. Yeah, and then he handballed it. Yeah. He's like, Schlong's just hanging out. He's just like, what am I doing? Oh, I better handball the ball. Like, everyone can see my willy. And like, <laughs> handballed he it. handballed it into the ground. Yeah, which That's was smart. Which was legal. That's yeah. fine. You got rid of the ball. Yeah. And they get... Ping for yep. holding the ball. Whereas there was one in the uh, GWS Brisbane game where Chucky took on Connor Iden, I think it was. Iden grabbed the back of his shirt and uh, you could see that he had the shirt. Chucky took a bounce and the umpire's like, no, nah, mate, that's holding the ball because you've thought, yeah. Because if you bounce it while you're being tackled, it's, it's holding, holding the ball. ball. Exactly right. Because yeah. you can dispose of it. Exactly. Yep. I was like, ah, you got one right. There's the one good decision. They, no, they, always, call, they always call yeah. it. All right, so that's boy. Take us Yeah, <laughs> you guys have taken up a long time in uh, why I can't stand, so I'm just going to say mine quickly. Melbourne, uh, I mentioned this before, 17,000 in attendance at the MCG. I was there. Definitely was better in the bar than in the crowd because you couldn't hear any Melbourne fans. This is just brutal. They were obviously going through a hard time, Melbourne. So many injuries and things like that. Just this rock isn't up. a hard was time a for them. I'm, I'm saying just like in their prime, they should be up there and they've got a lot of injuries and things like that. You should be rocking up. Beautiful night in Melbourne. Uh, 17,000, that's a joke. Even as a North Melbourne fan, I can say we get Fake bigger fans. fans than that. So. What is going on? Horrible gear. Why well, I can't stand. Good one, stats man. <laughs> All right, a little bit of a super coach wash. Yes. Uh, Cherry, 185. Oh. Jeez, Gornicus, 177. Not bad. Darcy Cameron, I called this in the tab. Super coach. Did, yes. Uh, look ahead. He was going to have a big one, and he went off, 165. Only owned by 2.5% of coaches. Yeah. Uh, Chad Chunley Warner, 164. Not bad. Uh, considering some of the clangers he had early too, yeah. that's massive. Heen Man, 144. Luke Ryan is back, baby. 156, <laughs> 155 for Jeremy McGovern. There's got to be coaches out there with both of those in their defense, so there should be pretty big scores, mm-hmm. I reckon, this week. So I just saw someone had 2,900. That checks out. Whoa, really? Because if you've got like Heaney up Captain forward Sherry. as well. Yeah. If you've Cameron. 2,900. That's Heaney, the biggest score in a couple of years. Heaney, 144 as well. Jordan Clark, 138. There's teams that feasibly Martin, would have like all of those names I just said. So, uh I have to find that out on the Supercoach show tomorrow if that's the one of the biggest scores ever. Probably will be. There's someone out there that would have got 3,000 once. Uh, not covering themselves the glory. Charlie Kerno, 17 points before he was subbed out. Did he get subbed out? No, he actually just he sat. He just sat. Because they were already out the sub. Mm. Uh, my beloved Jai Caldwell, 55. Tough one. Uh, but Clary Oliver, just gross. I got rid of him. Very 38 happy. 38 points. What are you doing at this point? It was 30. Dacos had a shocker as well. Yeah, 60. Dacos 66. Yeah. She's all keep an eye on him for injury gear as well. Yeah, I think uh, he, he might be out, but we'll have to wait and see. Tough one with everybody having used all their trades. Stewart as well, a really down week, but he's been great in the last couple of months, so that's yeah. okay. Nice one. It was a good week, so listen to the official Supercoach podcast tomorrow. So that's boy will be on that. Yes. Right on. that'll do it for AFL today for today. Thank you to the Ding Guy for jumping on, Alex. Cheers. Thank you to the Stats Boy. He's Thank had you. about 87 beers and he's rocked up. No, no. Full of, just not today, last night, maybe. Full of vinegar and lots of other vinegar. stuff. <laughs> uh, he doesn't get the reference. I know what you guys are. Remember, remember to smash a like across all the socials. See us doing lots of fun stuff during the week. We have lots and lots of fun stuff in store as well throughout the finals. We have a trailer dropping tomorrow. Nice. Ooh, for the AFLW. AFLW show. Get around that. Yes. Uh, so get around the AFLW show as well as the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia. We have a Olympics, uh, bas- Olympic basketball wrap, which will be for tomorrow. Nice. Shame for the... Uh, Boomers, the Opals, anyway. Uh, Creek Today, Football Today, NBA, NFL Australia, hold all tickets, all the good stuff there. 
Uh, YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X. Get around them on the socials or that's where we'll fight you. Yep. Get around them like, I don't know, Tommy Elvin getting around a perm in the 80s. Nice. Oh, yeah, Bring him back. Hair. He had the best hair. Get him oh, we didn't, speaking of hair, we didn't mention Jed Walter having a snag on he got Saturday two. night. He got two, yeah. Yeah. So he's back. And then he got subbed. We again. actually forgot to talk about him. I'm doing these ones. Every time I say what I'll use, get him. That's he's my, got his hair back out there. My yeah. large adult son, Jed Walters. Uh, <laughs> right, that's it. We'll catch you later this week. We'll be back for the Wednesday Midweek Madness show for more AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy is not great if you're a Carlton fan. Back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.